don't want anybody to mistake who this season is for. There's a lot of talk in the world about Xmas and giving the glory to this and that and the other. But in this house, in this temple, we give him all the glory. And I don't want anybody to mistake country. Oh, this is a good day to give God praise. Thanks. This is a good day to give God praise. Oh, good Lord. If somebody knows that God has been faithful ever through the years. I know I'm not the only one. Heavenly Father, we come boldly to your throne, but humbly in your presence. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for this is the day that you have made. God, we know that things have not all the way that we want them to go. But you the steps of the righteous by the Lord. And we give you glory, Lord. We give you glory. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. We thank you for covering us. Thank you for protecting us. Lord, you us to make it here. All down through the years, down through the month, down through the week, down through the hour, you have covered us. You have us. And God, we give you all the Glory! Yes, we say hallelujah. We say hallelujah. We say hallelujah. God, in this house, ain't no rock going to cry out for us. We are going to give you the glory. We're going to sing your praises to the top of the mountain and to the depth of the valley. God, we're going to continue to ask that you bless each and every person under the sound of this voice. And bless those that are in route here. Bless those that desire to be here. Bless those that are watching by way of the internet. Bless, 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 Lord. Bless, Lord. Bless, Lord. And we'll continue to give you all glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for the angel of this house. Thank you for protecting them through the highways and the byways. Thank you for his family. Lift them up, Lord, high on eagle's wings as you continue to use them mightily. It is in Jesus' name that we Jesus. pray and say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Before you sit down, look at somebody and tell them, I've never been so free. If you like, if you know that you're free, come on, tell them, I've never been so free. He turned beauty from ashes into beauty. Oh, I've never been so free. Oh, God, free. He who the Son set free, you're free indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, the guilt of sin. The guilt of sin is gone. Hallelujah. It's good when you stop and think about the world that we live in, but to be free. Tell somebody, I'm free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. Somebody say, and you can't do a thing about it. Free. He who the sun set free. Help us. Help us. Help us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Praise the Lord. 
It's good to be free. And I may not be free of bills. I may not be free of pain. I may not be free of problems, yeah. but tell somebody I'm guilt free. I'm sin free. Yeah. Lift your hands and say, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. I'm free. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Help us, God. Thank God for Jesus. My God. My, 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 my. Praise our God. Yeah, Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah, Just give him a quick praise. I know you come out the blessing. Free. Oh, my, 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 my. My, my, my. You might as well be that Like that two weeks ago. <laughs> but God been by. God been by. Give him the glory. Thank you. Praise our God. Thank you for who you are. Glory.
Y'all are watching online. Eleven months, and I'm in month number twelve. But some of us in month number two didn't think we were gonna make it. Month number three, we were thought we would have lost our minds. But now we are at the end of the year, and you mean to tell me I can't give God a glory? him a praise. I, I, I gotta preach. I gotta preach. I gotta preach, but but does anybody gotta dance they haven't given him? You got about a minute. Give him a dance that you haven't given him. <laughs> your praise any praise oh let it go to God Glory. with his power Yes, yes, yes. To God.
me God. Hey. We've got, was it two more Sundays? Two more Sundays. I hope the building can handle the praise that's going to be going up. Many of you all, I know your testimony. Yes, sir. And you got a lot to give God praise for. Amen. He has God. You've been through sickness. Yeah. You've been through loss. Yes, sir. You've been through joblessness. But you look back and you say, God, you kept me. Yeah. I don't know how we gonna get out of this year. Well. Maybe watch night service. All we'll do is just dance and shout. My Lord. Dance with your feet and scream with your mouth. Praise our God. How awesome God has been. Yeah. I've been blessed and I don't even deserve what God has done for me. Say it, Zion. Yeah. When I think God. back this year, the things that I did that were not pleasing to him. Yeah. What do you mean, not pleasing to him? No, you don't have to sleep around, but if you just don't believe. That's right. Sometimes doubt comes in when you don't understand and that does not please God. Well, God wants us to believe him even when we can't see where it's coming from. Well. Come on, come on, come on. Good but he's been good. Give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Say so, say so. He's a mighty God. We give him the glory. He's a mighty God. Wonderful is him. You know how it is yeah. when you've had a good meal, you don't get up and run from the table. That's right. You just sit a spell. That's right. Come on, Zion. That's what we're doing now, just sitting a spell. Uh-huh. <laughs> the well, glory of the Lord has showed up. <laughs> yeah, da, da. And now we just Ooh, gonna da, rest da, da, da. in him. Uh-huh. <laughs> well. Let what he's done start penetrating. Yes. Mm. My, 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 my. Help us, God. Help us. Help us. Think about all the ways he's made for us this year. Some of us got promotion and didn't deserve it. Well. Some of our homes should have blown up or flooded. Yeah. But God kept us. Yeah. My, 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 my. Some of us ran out, but he ran in. That's he showed up with what we needed. Early this year, we were looking for something else. But somewhere around October and November, God 
healed. Tomorrow she goes for an MRI, but they can't they couldn't find nothing last month. <laughs> Talk about what time? Yeah. So they're gonna look again tomorrow. Yeah, How many of y'all believe they're not gonna find nothing tomorrow? I can already tell them the evidence is gone. Yeah. <laughs> Help us, God. And you want to know why we praise him like we praise him? Well, I can't help it. That's right. Somebody go. Oh, Lord. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Every day, I'm feeling better. Yes, sir. Praise our God. Two weeks ago, I was feeling 71. Uh huh. The day I feel 65. <laughs> How many of y'all know the years of canker worms and the pomegranates and all that? that man, God can restore. Yes, sir. You better talk about it. You start feeling younger again. Thank you. And I didn't know when you feel young, you start thinking young. Well, help us. The Lord is good. We give him the glory. Good, yeah. oh, now, I'm, I, I promise you, I'm not going to preach long. I understand how she feels. But how many this year yeah. have had seasons of pure chaos? Yes, sir. It's all right. I'm talking about madness. All right. But when you look back and see God brought you through. incident Help us. on the parking lot two weeks ago. Help us. Help us. And I got a subpoena in the mail on yesterday. Uh -huh. The crazy thing about the subpoena, it says PG, was it? The state of Maryland uh -huh. versus Jesus Jesus. All right now. I say, come on with it. <laughs> I 
say come on with it. Is that what it said? Yes, sir. The state of Maryland yeah. versus Jesus, Jesus. Yes, sir. And then they put on the bottom of the summons, if I don't show up, it's contempt of court. All right. Well, I'm showing up. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, Zion. And the evidence that I'm taking with me is the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. Go figure that. Yes, yeah, sir. Come on now. This little church has even confused the state Amen. of Maryland. Amen. Help us. I'm going, supposed to be going about a misdemeanor that somebody did, but they so confused. Help us. They just said, the state of Maryland versus Jesus, Jesus. All right now. I done already got attacked because I put a sign up and I put on the sign, Jesus never fails. Amen. And he does. And then I got a complaint because the sign says Jesus never fails. Then I said, seek Jesus first. I know that's right. And they said, well, yo, why don't you say seek God first or seek him first? Well. And I said, but his name is Jesus. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And so as I look back and see what's going on, I'm beginning to see the book of Acts in its reality. Yes, sir. Where they said, don't preach in his name. Yes, sir. Well, give me a close up. <laughs> Jesus, 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 yes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. For in him I live, in him I move. The name is Jesus. Come on, Zion. So I'll be there, Lord willing, on the 26th. Amen. I'm going to get me a big button that says Jesus, <laughs> Lord. Help him. Yes, if I can find a jacket that you can write yes, over yes, and just say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus all yes, on there. Yep. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. While, while, while I'm in jail, y'all take care of mother away for me. Amen. Salas will go with me and then PG better watch it because every criminal is going to be out because yeah. the doors are going to come wide open. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It ain't as bad as it sounds. It's all right. But it just shows me yeah. how corrupt the government, uh -huh. how crazy the government is. Yeah. All they needed to do was find out what the man's name is. Amen. So the only thing that they can say is just Jesus, Jesus. It's all right. <laughs> Amen. And he says, if I be lifted up, <laughs> I'll draw. Look, I, I will draw all men myself. unto me. me. Amen. So I'll give Kenny and Steen a copy of the summons. I'll let them look into it, but I'm not worried about it. I know what it's all about. Yes, sir. And it is just what it is. <laughs> oh, Lord. That dang Jesus. The guy who they arrested cussed me out, Amen. told me that I was a false prophet. All right. But they couldn't get his name. Uh -huh. <laughs> but watch God. Yeah. Don't watch me, watch God. Yes, sir. Because he's given me a platform now. Yeah. Come on, that I can lift up the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. While we were away, we were at University of Miami. And I am so proud of my granddaughter, but Amen. while we were there, while we were there, they had a section where four religious organizations were able to render a prayer. Uh -huh. And the thing that bothered me, the Muslims, 
the Catholics, who are the other ones? Uh, Christians, and was one more faith. Jewish. D Jewish. Yes. The Jewish people didn't say Yahshua. That's right. Islam didn't say Allah. Right. Christians didn't say Jesus. Amen. But the ABC community, right. they stood up and announced all of their alphabets. All right. And I'm saying, what kind of world are we living in when church people or people who have a belief system yeah. conform to this world? Don't tell me I can't pray in the name of Jesus. All right now. I'll do it anyway. Yes. But everybody's be political, politically correct. And how in the world can Islam pray in the name of God? Yeah. When every Muslim I see is always talking about Allah. Yes, sir. But on Thursday, not one name of any God was mentioned. Yeah. I'm like Paul, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel That's of Jesus it. Christ. It is, the power. it is the power of God unto salvation yes, sir. to everyone that believes to the Jew first, the then to the Gentile. Well. So, PG County, get ready. Because I'm going to talk about Jesus. Yeah. And I'm going to for him. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm not going to charge this guy with anything. Amen. I'm going to show the love of Christ and try to try to use this opportunity to let the judge see what the mercy of God looks like. This is not my first encounter. They came on the parking lot and stole our van a couple of years ago. Amen. The van had Faith Assembly of Christ written on it. Bishop Mitchell away, pastor in the address. They stole the van and went to 301 Exxon, SO Exxon gas station, backed the van into the store, hooked the chain up and took the ATM machine. Amen. Had all of it on videotape. Right. News people came here one Wednesday night while we were in service to interview me and I stood right there in front of the cameras and says, oh, we don't worry about the van. I pray that whoever stole the van get saved yes, sir. and get filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Holy Ghost, I said. But here's the problem. They think that I'm going to go up there and be angry. I'm going up there and show the love of God. Amen. I'm not out to do nothing but to display Christ yes. and him crucified. crucified. So y'all pray. It's going to be fun. God always takes me to a place of fun. Wonderful. Amen. Father, we thank you for this is, that you're about to do. Speak to your children today. Please. Use these lips of clay that we may be able to display, oh God, that which you want us to know. Uh -huh. God, that soul that is close as hell, snatch them back yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. And we're going to be careful to give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn your Bibles, if you will, three very, very, very familiar passages of Scripture. John 3, 16, Amen. 17. This is a Christmas message. I'm doing a whole series. Matthew 16, Matthew 1, verse 6, I'm sorry. Matthew 1, verse 23. When we have it, I want us all to read aloud. Roy's got that good microphone voice. I haven't switched up with mother. Our problem is I'm trying to save her for me. Amen. I'm selfish. Well. We got 50 years, and I'm trying to get another 50 years. God be with you. What I'm trying to do is a retrade. <laughs> Okay, so we can last longer. Well, I, I don't want to be without her. Amen. So I'm save her voice and her strength when I can. So don't read nothing into it. It's just right. me protecting what's mine. Amen. Ooh. Help him. <laughs> Help 
Let's begin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Wow. Matthew 1, verse number 6. Let's go. And Jesse begot David the king, and David the king begot Solomon of her that had been with the wife of Urias. Wow. And David the king begot Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Wow. Matthew 1, 23. Behold, a virgin, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Let the church say amen. I know you're going to say in your mind, how in the world is this man going to hook up these scriptures for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son to condemn the world but that through him might be saved but here's the connection and Jesse begat David, the king. And David, the king, begot Solomon. But you see that thought? Her that had been the wife of Uriah's. The one that David messed up with. The one that David moved out of his kingly place. Think about it. King David could have had anything he wanted. He was the king. He had plenty of money. He had plenty of everything. But think about it. He went after the only thing he could not have, which was somebody else's. Look at somebody said, that sounds like my story. Come on, how many of y'all know that you always go after something that you, that you really shouldn't have? Come tell somebody, I knew I shouldn't have did it, but I did it. Uh, y'all ain't been there, okay? Let me come on this side, y'all don't. How many over here know you shouldn't have done it, but you did it? Come on, open it mouth and say, I went after what I knew I couldn't have. It was what I could not have that attracted me. I don't know what it is. I had the pick of everything, but I wanted something that belonged to somebody else. I had a problem. Mm. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is interpret God with us. Tell somebody even in my madness, God is still with me. That's not the title. I just thought I'd just throw that out there. I, I mean, how many of y'all realize that there's some stuff that you have really done that disqualifies you for being where you are right now? 
whether you like it or not, you're sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now, but you know you don't deserve it. In the midst of your madness, he still is with you. This time of the year, the merchants, the store owners, and all the people, they talk about Christmas, a time for giving, time for giving a gift. And the problem I have is that they've commercialized Christmas so much that they twist it around because what Christmas really is, forgiving, is Christmas. They took the four off of giving, and they just dealt with the giving, but they never dealt with the forgiving. A lot of us are in trouble right now because we never learned how to forgive. Some of us are in dire places right now because we refuse to forgive. But Christmas is forgiving because forgiving is Christ mass. Christ came to forgive me. I don't know what your sin is. And trust me, your sin ain't that important to me. Because your sin can't keep me out of heaven. Only my sin can. How many of y'all know nobody else's sin can keep you out? That's why God had to show me how to ignore your accusations because your accusations carry no power. The only power is in the word of God. So I looked at this and I'm saying, okay, God, what are you trying to tell what you trying to teach me? He says, God with us. That three phrase, God is with us. What it does it mean for God so loved the world that he provided a gift that we could not afford. If I had to pay for my sin, there's not enough money, not enough coupons, not enough stamps, not enough wick. There's, not, uh, uh, there, 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 there's nothing that can pay for my sin. How many of y'all know your sin was a mess and is a mess? But had it not been for the blood of Jesus that came to wash away my sin... And in the washing of my sin, I was supposed to learn how to do it like he did and to forgive those that trespass against me. One of the hardest things that humans do is learning how to forgive. Because forgiving means that I had to quit some stuff. I had to take the spotlight off of me and remember that it's just not about me. This is something that I got to go through so I can learn how to forgive. Because if I expect God to forgive me and really accept that forgiveness, I got to stop holding grudges on people. So I can be free because if you are not forgiving, let me tell you something, you're not going to make it in heaven. Look at somebody say, let some stuff go. Is an important part of our walk and the principle of it is very very simple forgiveness is critical forgiveness you say how is this a Christmas message because God forgave you and you have a responsibility 
Stop giving gifts to buy people's affection. Forgive them. And let me give you a PS. Let me help you out. If it's somebody that you don't like and they don't know you don't like them, do, your, do them a favor and yourself a favor. Don't tell them that you don't like them. Because when you tell somebody that you haven't liked them for 20 years, all you did was unloaded something on their mind and the real problem between you and God. The problem is not between you and them. The problem is they, 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 they show you something that you covet or you envy. And so what you do is that you lay that weight on them when you need to say, God, I don't know why I don't like them. And let God do something in your heart. Because if we learn these steps and learn these principles, what we're going to find out is when you get into the new year, God's going to give you a new chance. And when you get a new chance, you're going to have a new walk. And when you have a new walk, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have power that nobody else is going to be able to deal with but you. The power of God unto salvation. So I'm just going to go to 2 Samuel. We're not going to read there, but we, get, we go to the... We, we go to the story, and the story is found in the 12th chapter of 2 Samuel. For time's sake, I'm not going to read it. I'm going to tell you the story. The story that David could have had anything that he wanted, but he chose the wrong thing. Was it in his sight? Yes. But was it in his taking? No. Look at somebody and say, everything you see don't mean you can have it. See, sometimes we want stuff that we see, but we don't know that there's a price tag for what you see. I, I, there are certain things that, that, that I don't even look at because I made a covenant with my eyes. I don't want to entertain that thought because I don't, I don't know what I may do. Oh, I'm a scaredy cat. There are certain people that I have to keep out of my life so that I can maintain eternal life. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. Look at somebody say, eternal life. Mm -hmm. So now we find that David committed a sin, one of the worst sins that he could have committed. He committed adultery. And he also committed murder. When Bathsheba was with child, he did like most of us do, try to cover up sin instead of acknowledging it. If you would acknowledge your sin, God will forgive your sin more quickly. David had to learn it in the backwards because he says, when I'm converted, then I'll strengthen the brethren. Don't wait until you get converted. Be converted. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But when you recognize that sin has moved into your life and sin has caused you to move into something, stop trying to hide it. Acknowledge where God, where you are to God. You don't have to report to man, this is what I did. Because when you start reporting to man what you did, then you always come back with the big lie trying to justify it and make it somebody else's fault instead of coming to the realization you made a bad choice. How many of us here have made bad choices? But how many of y'all thank God that your choices did not destroy you? Come on, give God a clap. My choices... My choices did not destroy me. Now, there's something about this story that really rocks my mind because here David is now. The child is born, okay? He done killed Uriah. He done committed adultery. He done humiliated himself. He has humiliated the nation of Israel. But all of that under the child is born. 
Now, when the child is born, the child is born sick. Look at somebody say, anything birthed out of sin will be sick. When you choose things that are not pleasing to God and they begin to manifest in your life, it's going to be sin. It's going to be sick. But there is something here that really blew my mind. Now watch the story. So the baby is born, and the baby is born sick. But the baby is innocent. And so what David did was keep on praying, hoping that God was going to reverse the illness because what he did and the child that came out of it, he wanted. Problem number two is sometimes after you get what you want, then you still want some more of what you get. But God knows how to cut it off and say enough is enough. Now, here's the thing that I want you to look at. I want you to look at real close. While the child was alive, David fasted and would not eat. But when the child died, David then began to eat. He went to Chick-fil-A, got himself waffle fries and, you know, filled himself up. The problem is, his servant says, why in the world are you doing eating now when the child was dying, you weren't eating? And David had a response that was just phenomenal. He says, while the child liveth, I had hope that God was going to change his mind about my sin. How many of us here think that God going to change his mind about our sin? God's not going to change his mind concerning sin. He says nothing that is unrighteous is going to dwell before him. But here's the irony. The child was innocent. David said, I I'm going to change my ways so that I can go to him. I can't bring him back. But because of his state of innocence, he's in the presence of God. And what David was saying, I got to change my ways. How many here come to the realization no matter what you're going through, you got to change your ways. And you can't expect nobody to change them for you. Tell somebody, I got to change my ways. If I plan on going with God, I got to change my ways. When you don't change your ways, you want to end up going to a Christless hell. So here David goes, and David says, okay, I'm going to have to live in such a way that I can join my child. I got to change me. Gotta change me. How many of you know that there's some changes gotta take place? We're at the end of the year right now. You know that change has got to take place. Irregardless of what you've done, you can't change what you've done. That's one of the problems that we have. We spend too much time trying to deal with what we've done. What we've done, we can't change. Look at somebody say, get over it. And then tell yourself, get over it. Okay. Point number one, David accepted what he could not change. Come on, say David accepted what he could not change. Tell somebody, I got to accept what I can't change. Until you come to a place that you can accept what you can't change, even if you created the problem. If it was your unforgiveness that created the problem, deal with it. Learn from your mistake. Oh my God, help me, Jesus. 
See, that's what folk don't want to do. Folk don't want to acknowledge that I made a mistake. And my mistake is so bad, it created all of this in my life. Now my life is in chaos, and now I'm going to run around like a dog chasing his tail for the rest of my life, blaming everybody for what I did because I refuse to forgive. Look at somebody say, accept what you can't change. You can't change it. You can't change it. I held a bottle when I was a young man, and we had dare, dare you. I was a dumb kid. <laughs> Put a firecracker in the bottle and see who can hold it the longest. I was a dumb kid. I, would, I didn't get cool my lottie dottie do. I was a dumb kid. And I got a mark that goes from my hand all the way up to here. That's almost 70 years old, or 60 years old. I can't change that. That mark is a reminder of what I shouldn't have done. Some of you are going to have marks that's going to remind you of what you shouldn't have done. Because you're trying to blame somebody for what God was trying to teach you. God used it to teach you to do something. You refused to do it. Now you got chaos. You can't change it. It's your fault. You can blame the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. You can blame everybody. But because you refused to do what you know what was right. One of the things I've learned in my marriage with Mother Way, it ain't always the guys that do something wrong. Guys, do you know the girls can do some crazy stuff too? But the only way that we made it for 50 years is because when she felt like a nut, I forgave her. What do you do when you forgive? You forget about the offense and you just move on. Look at somebody say, it's time for us to let some stuff go. As we're leaving this physical year, you got to think about what is going on in your life that's going to hold you from the promises of God. Look at somebody say, let it, let it go. Point number two. Somebody say, point number two. David did not give in to his feelings. Look at somebody say, don't give in to your feelings. You have to accept what you can't change, but then your feelings come in. And then you start getting the feeling where I feel. So who cares about your feelings? Look at somebody say, get rid of your feelings. Your feelings will deceive you. Your feelings will make you believe you can't make it. Feelings are carnal. Feelings causes you to act within yourself instead of trusting God. Tell somebody, get rid of your feelings. God, help me, Jesus. Point number three. I only got six points, so I'm on number three now. I told you I'm going to be short. Somebody say, what is point number three? Focus on what is left and not what is lost. Oh, God, y'all didn't even that. Y'all didn't. Look at somebody say, focus on what is left, not what is lost. You can't get back what you lost. But you can focus on whatever's left. How many got a praise left in you? You've been through a storm, but you still got a hallelujah. How many of y'all been through a storm, but you got a hallelujah? Focus on what you got. Open it up your Bible and say, hallelujah. hallelujah. You've been through all types of misery, but you still got to thank you, Jesus. Open up your Bible and tell them, thank you, Jesus. Focus on what is left. Don't let the devil put you on a merry-go-round where you're chasing what you lost. What you lost is gone. 
People look at me and say, Bishop, they used to tease me as I was younger because they, you can put your hand in mud and pull out gold. You know why I haven't been able to achieve great wealth? It's because I never look at the money that I lost. Because if I gained it once, I can get it again. Come on, open your mouth and say, focus on what you, don't focus on what you lost. Focus on what's left. Point number four, I'm almost done. David did something that most of us didn't do. And this is serious. You say you ask God for forgiveness. But did you really ask God to forgive you? Because let me tell you something. When God forgives you, there's a peace that comes over. If you don't get the peace, all you did was recite to God what you wish. Because let me tell you something. When you really come to God and ask him to forgive you, before he does, he checks your heart. He checks your motives. He checks why do you want to be forgiven? Why do you want to be restored? If I restore you, are you going to glorify me after I restore you? Or are you coming to me just because you got caught? Ask God to forgive you for real. When you ask God to forgive you, what people say don't matter no more. What folks think about you don't matter no more. When you've asked God to forgive you, even the ones that you have offended, they still may not have got it shut, but you hold your head up and you say, I've been forgiven. Because there's a peace down on the inside. I'm not talking about a peace that's phony. I'm talking about one of this real kind of peace where I can skip in front of my enemy. Where I can sit at the table in the very presence of my enemy. I'm at such peace. I don't have to run to hide. I can stand. Because I messed up. But I asked God to forgive me. And I met it down in my heart. And he examined me. When was the last time God examined you? Open up your suit and say, God examined me. Come on, come on. Come on, God, I need you to get in my heart. God, I need you in my head. God, I need you in my heart. God, I need you in my head. God, I need you in me until my mouth begins to act like what I'm thinking. The story of David is pretty simple. Very, very simple story. It says in 23, it says, Behold, a virgin shall bring forth a child, bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is interpret God with us. When you have reached the point where you have really learned how to forgive, then what you did to Urias doesn't matter anymore. Tell somebody my past doesn't haunt me. I've acknowledged my sin. I can't change it, but God can forgive me. And then start thanking God for that forgiveness. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Look at somebody and say, Christmas is for forgiving not forgiving. The world has put giving for Christmas. But Christmas means that Christ showed up 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what Jesus came for. Jesus did not come to condemn any of you. I want everybody in this room to become a witness right now. And look at somebody in their eyes and say, do you feel condemnation? Because if you feel condemnation in any area of your life, you need to come to the altar. You need to come to the altar. Because Jesus didn't come to condemn. Come on, son. He did not come to condemn. No one that is walking with God should feel condemned. You just really have not forgive, been forgiven. Now you say, well, Bishop, I told him I'm sorry, but did you really mean it? What did you do? Did you say, Lord, search me? And if you find anything in me, God, Why don't you end the year right? You know you got some mess that you still haven't dealt with. Come on, the altar is open. The altar is, I told you I wasn't going to be long. While on others. Do not pass me by. I'm crying, Savior. Hear my humble cry. If you have not been baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the water is ready. We'll take you down in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And the Bible says you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth, believing is an action. It's an action. It's something that you got to do. While on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. I'm crying, Savior. Hear my heart. While on others thou art calling
forgiveness he says I can't fix it can't deal with it can't go backwards I'm stopping right here I'm not going to give up I'm not going to lie down lift your hands and say I'm going to focus lift your hands in worship and say I'm going to focus what's left not what's lost. You may not get back what you lost, but your future is bright if you focus on what's left. That's the only way we can make it. Philippians, the third chapter says, I don't come out myself to ap apprehend it. Y'all remember that little scripture? In other words, he says, I'm not perfect. Tell somebody, I'm not perfect. But what I've been through. Come on, open your mouth. What I've been through. This year. What I've been through from my life in Christ to now. I've learned something. Come on, tell somebody, I've learned something. And I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. And my making it got nothing to do with you. Christmas is forgiving. That's why God came. He came to forgive. That's the only gift that's important. And then lastly, lastly, because folks are not going to forgive you. I want you to know that. So I want you to ask me then, what do I do if folks won't forgive me? Come on, ask me the question. Forgive yourself. If you forgive yourself, Scripture says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. All you've got to do is make sure you don't go any further. Forgive yourself. Watch what God will do. Your destiny will change because God has taught you a valuable lesson of forgiving. Your sin of unforgiveness. He was the pattern. He came to give his life for our transgression. What right do we have to hold anybody liable for their offenses to us? That's a tough word, isn't it? Everybody's standing. Next week, we'll have a good word. We'll jump and shout and eat Sister Lisa's food. Thank God for her. God bless you, Sister Lisa. We're expecting high time next week. How many of y'all looking for great things as we have our fellowship meal? Keep in mind, keep in mind, you really need to get here early. Um, service will start exactly at 10, 15. It will be open seating. Um, that means if you get here and you don't get a seat, it's your fault. Okay? 
Everything is free. You don't have to do nothing but come, fellowship, eat, have a good time fellowshipping with one another. Listen to a word. If you feel like getting delivered in your word, come on up. God bless you. Love you in Jesus' name. All right, we can stand for offering. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the word, God. God, we just ask right now, Lord, that you bless the offering, Lord. Bless the hands that come down, Lord God. Bless the ones that have. Bless the ones that do not have, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you may be able to bless them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Uh, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.